Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name's James. Um, I've been a member here at St. James for a few years now, so I was, I was circling the, the six to ten years um, a, uh, time frame today. I think that was the first time I've moved into that bracket. It's been up to, up to five before then. Um, yeah, so w- welcome this morning. We're going to have a service of Holy Communion this morning, um, and our current theme for the autumn is uh, we're working through the book of Philippians. We've been going for about four weeks now. I think this might be the fifth week. Um, and that will take us probably up to the end of October. And the theme specifically for today is working out our new identity. And Fabian's going to be um, preaching for us later on this morning. I'm just going to begin with the gathering. I'll say the, the, the bit not in bold. And if you could all join in with the what's written in bold. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with joy. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to stand, we're going to begin with uh, one song, uh, our kind of all-age song at the beginning. And I think Fabian's going to come and teach us some actions. So it's the famous uh, shine from the inside out. So the actions is shine from the inside out. Let the world will see you live in me. So let's try again. So shine from the inside out. Let the world will see you live in me. And then the know me, love me, fill me, send me is you know me. You love me, that's our hearts, yeah. You fill me, and as you go down, you're ready to say, and you send me. So that's the easiest. When it's low, it's easy. When it goes fast, so know me, love me, fill me, send me. There we go. Thank you. I'll stay here to continue (laughs) going. From the inside out, let the world to see, you live in me, shine. From the inside out, let the world to see, you live in me. Know me, you love me, you fill me, so send me, shine. From the inside out, let the world to see, you live in me. From the inside out, for the world to see, you live in me. Know me, love me, feel me, send me. Know me, love me, feel me, send me. Know me, love me, feel me, send me. To shine. From the inside out, for the world to see, you live in me. Shine. From the inside out, that the world will see, you live in me. Know me, love me, feel me, send me. Know me, love me, feel me, send me. Know me, love me, feel me, send me. To shine. Well done. Thank you. Um, before we continue with our praise time, it's, it's remain standing if you can um, but our children and young people are going to be going out to the, to the hall for their activities and, and uh, let's just say a quick prayer for them as, as they go out shall we Lord God we thank you for the gift of, of children, we thank you for the, the, um, the, the youth that is in this church Lord God would you go with them, would you go with the, their leaders Would you stay here with us as well, Lord? Would we know that we are one church, your church, even if we are in slightly different places within this building for a little part of it? Oh God, would would you work in our children as much as you work in us to further your kingdom and increase the fame of your name for your glory? Amen. Amen. Thanks. So yeah, if the children and young people would like to... 
and uh, we're going to collect in the forms, and I think we're going to move into praise time now as well. So, yeah, do remain st- standing if you can, but take a seat if you can. Sorry. Thank you. You can stand or sit or however you feel comfortable, but let's just be humble before our God. So our God is holy. He's awesome. And we're told that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Our God commands the hosts of heaven. He is king of kings. He is an all-consuming fire. He is the only holy God. He rescues us. He loves us. His grace is amazing. All fear flees because he has overcome death and set us free. So we bow before our holy God and worship him. We lose ourselves in him. He changes us from the inside out, and we learn to see through his eyes. He makes us wise if we follow him. Search me, O Lord, and know my heart, my thoughts, and see if there's anything offensive in me. Lead me to your everlasting life. Change me so that I shine with your glory. Those are all words from the songs that we're going to sing. So let's really raise the roof, raise your hearts, raise your heart rates, and raise to your feet if you can, and let's start singing, change my heart, O oh God. Let's it be a real prayer to make it ever true.
Thank you. If you'd like to take a seat. Um, Marilyn and then Jenny are going to come and share the readings with us this morning before Fabian comes and, and shares the word with us. So I'd like to invite Marilyn up to read the first reading for us. Morning. The first reading is from 1 John chapter 2, and it's verses 3 to 6, and then 15 to 17. And it just talks about, do we really know God? So verses 3 to 5. Now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. This is the word of the Lord. Be the second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 to 18. We are continuing Paul's letter to the people of Philippi. I'm reading this from the message, and it's entitled Rejoicing Together. What I'm getting at, friends, is that you should simply keep on doing what you've done from the beginning. When I was living among you, you lived in responsive obedience. Now that I'm separated from you, keep it up. Better yet, redouble your efforts. Be energetic in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. That energy is God's energy, an energy deep within you. God himself willing and working at what will give him the most pleasure. Do everything readily and cheerfully. No bickering, no second guessing allowed. Go out into the world uncorrupted, a breath of fresh air in this squalid and polluted society. Provide people with a glimpse of good living and of the living God. Carry the light-giving message into the night, so I'll have good cause to be proud of you on the day that Christ returns. You'll be living proof that I didn't go to all that work for nothing. Even if I am executed here and now, I'll rejoice in being an element in the offering of your faith that you make on Christ's altar, a part of your rejoicing. But turnabout's fair play, you must join me in my rejoicing. Whatever you do, don't feel sorry for me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Translation, because it's very nice. Thank you very much. I'm going to use the NIV, but uh, it's illuminating as ever. So thank you very much for that. So we're going to explore today what does it mean to keep on doing what God has already started. For some of you, a very long time. And we're going to see that this passage is mainly about the life of the body. 
So it's not about working out our individual salvation, which in a way is maybe the first passage. You know, what does it mean to be a disciple in God's world? What does it mean to love the world? Because God loves so loved the world that he gave his only son. But what does it mean not to love the world's values and philosophies and ways of living and how that's more the individual? But this passage is more about what it means to be that community and for the Philippians, a community in a very difficult place, in a Roman colony. What did it mean for them to be so united and loving one another that they would be shining as a light? And what does it mean for us today? So let's pray as we... Bring ourselves to God. Lord, open our hearts, open our minds, and make us willing to hear your quiet voice, a voice of encouragement, but also a voice of challenge, that we as a church here, St. James, in this community, may continue to grow to be a light, a shining light, for our friends, our families, our neighbors, and all those you are sending us to. Amen. So if this is the first time you uh, hear about the letter to the Philippines, just a quick recap. Paul is in prison, and he writes to this community of faith, and he calls them friends because he knows them very well. He was there at the start of that community. Uh, he arrived in Philippi, and uh, he was instrumental in bringing to face someone called Lydia and a household and other people. And it's about now a decade after, and Paul feels that he might never have another chance to visit them, and he wants to write them a letter. And it's a friendship letter. It's a very close letter. And in it, he shares his gratitude because the Philippians have been continuing to financially help him, his ministry, and he's grateful for that. Um, he shares a bit of his situation about being in prison and what it means, and in a sense saying, you know, don't worry, it has turned out to, to the good. It's not easy to be in prison, but God is using me uh, as a witness. But he also wants to address uh, some um, uh, worries that he has for the Philippians, and there are two types of worries. There are issues inside the church, issues of disunity, and there are issues about the pressure from the outside and the fear that it brings into those Christians. And, um, and that's, that's what every church lives. They all have, we all have to face internal issues, and we all have to face kind of fears about being witness and what does it mean to be a, a, a genuine, true and um, good witness to the world. So Paul starts by addressing those issues here as we look at now chapter 2. And if you remember, the kind of at the heart of this passage is Christ himself. He said, you need to um, grow into a Christ-like mindset. And Mike, uh, I think brilliantly, last week, shared this um, reality of what does it mean to be more like Christ. Christ, who is God in form, who humbled himself by becoming human, by serving, by being obedient. And because of his obedience, even to death, death on the cross, God exalted him. And so we have this amazing uh, passage that God gave him the name that's above all names. Um, that now at the name of Jesus, I have my wrong glasses, I can see very well here, I can't see very well there. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and in heaven and on earth, and every tongue will acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. So Paul says, this is the heart, Jesus is Lord, this is the one you are now serving as Christian, not the values of the world, not what you used to be, you are following Jesus. So what does it mean? in a nutshell. Well, he says, you are now need to have this mindset um, that Jesus had. Obedient service and um, humility. That was the two hallmark of Jesus. Obedient and humble. So in a nutshell, as he obeyed, so should you, Paul says. And as he is now Lord, so live under his rule his directives, and his purposes. And it's not a suggestion that Paul uh, gives, it's a command, but it's not a stern military type of command. He says, my dear friends, Paul loves them and he wants the best for them. 
His command is out of a deep concern for their spiritual health and well-being. God wants our spiritual health as a church. He wants to bless St. James. He wants this place to be a living witness to our community. God makes strong claims. He says, human race in itself is fallen. It's bankrupt. It can't, in its own strength, be reconciled to God. We are incapable of living that glorious life that God wills for us. But what we couldn't do for ourselves, Jesus did it on our behalf. The message says this in this way, a translation that we will know. Out of sheer generosity, God put us in right standing with himself, a pure gift. He got us out of the mess we were in and restored us to where he always wanted us to be. And he did it by means of Jesus Christ. And that's why Paul puts in that passage Jesus at the heart. Because it's all start there. And this message requires an obedient response. And many of you have in one way or another, and maybe repeatedly come to, responded to that message of grace and mercy and forgiveness. But it's an ongoing also obedience to God's directives. And so Paul says, you've, you've obeyed when I was there. You were you know, keen to express the gospel, to live together. Now that I am absent, continue to that. Continue to follow God's directive. And so he says, Therefore, my dear friend, just as you've always obeyed, now, not only in my presence, but now that I'm absent, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And the kind of message translation says, um, Be energetic in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. So fear and trembling is that reverence and sensitivity to God's direction and to God's life. But this is not about our own salvation. This is about what it means as brothers and sisters here at St. James to live together in such a way that the witness of the gospel, the life of God, will flourish. And so Paul here will address two issues, the disunity, the discord that is um, experienced by the uh, Philippians, but also their fearfulness about being a witness in a place that's quite challenging. And Paul says you are to be reforming your church life, always. You have to be energetic, working at it, until spiritual health is so good that um, the disease that's, um, of strife and bad feeling is done with and that spiritual health is restored. And I think every faith community, St. James included, can be diseased. And maybe probably all faith community are diseased in some ways because we are not there yet. I like that. If you, if you know a donkey in things, he says, are you there yet? No, you're not there yet. Some, some people know the kind of the joke. But we're not there yet. We have been saved. We have been transferred to God's realm. But God continues to uh, use people that are still not perfect. And so we are all, in one way or another, diseased. But we need to be working at it. So the question is, what is God calling us to work at as a body here at St. James? for our spiritual health and for the faith of this community. I'm not going to give you the answer. I'm going to give you a good news. The good news is that this work out of God's plan for St. James can only happen when we are truly dependent on him. It's only the, pro the production of our dependence upon God's power. He says, um, you have to work out but you're not on your own. You only have to work out what God is working in you and through you. In other words, we are to work out what God in his grace has worked in. So what is God's working in at St. James? And the word working here is the, the, the Greek word where we've translated, we are now using energy, energon. 
And it denotes the effectiveness of something. It's effective. God's work is effective. It's effective in the willing. He's going to make us willing to change, willing to see differently, willing to act differently. And he's also then going to work out the results of that willingness. So both the willing to amend if they are an issue and the accomplishment of that amendment will be God's work in us and through us. So what is required? How do we do that? Well, Paul said, look at Jesus. What happened with Jesus? He was obedient. He was listening and he was obedient to God's will. And obedience is letting God first love us, being filled with God's love, and then letting God direct us. If you're fully aware that God loves you, you will be fully willing to follow you, follow him, no matter what. No matter the difficulties, no matter the struggles, because you know you are loved and you are secure in him. Jesus knew he was fully loved and he was able to fully be obedient to God. And the other one is humility. And humility, you see here, it's not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. You have gifts and abilities and creativity. You know. It's not about pushing those down, thinking, you know, oh, I'm, you know, I'm useless. No. But it's using that in such a way that you don't think about yourself because you are using it to the service of God. And there is a joy and there is kind of a, a, a growing sense of, of God being with you. And so doing that with reverence and sensitivity. God wants our spiritual health here at St. James. He wants to bless us. He wants us to be effective, an effective witness to our community, our town, and maybe our whole world. And so Paul moves on. What do we need to watch out? And he says, well, there are two danger. The first one, do everything without grumbling or arguing. Grumbling and arguing. Now, grumbling is the reactive, you know, we, we, we can't stop it in a sense. And let's be honest, we all grumble, and your vicar also. That's, that's, that's the reality. We all have a moment of grumbling and complaining. The, the dictionary says uh, grumbling, the action or fact of complaining in a bad-tempered way. Or making a low rumbling sound. <laughs> Let's be honest, we all do it. And there are times we need to, you know, kind of let off the steam. But I think the wise is do that with a good friend or do that with your spouse or with your partner and do it with, in such a way that your intention is to come out the other side from, you know, the kind of initial reaction of anger and rumbling to making a decision that is about building up finding a healthy, spiritual, constructive way out. If we would do that, and if we learn to do that as a community, we will grow in spiritual health. So we don't deny the reality that we're not there yet, and we, you know, grumble will be a reality, but what do we do with it? Do we allow God to work through it so that the outcome will be a desire to not just stay there grumbling, which will be destructive, but to use that energy to build up, to find a healthy, spiritual, constructive way out. The other one, arguing, is actually more the intentional side. So the, the grumbling is like, you know, it just happened to you, you know, you're kind of angry, something happened, it's reactive. The arguing is intentional. There, there is a, 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 a thinking through. Um, you, you plan something. Um, could be a, a pattern, uh, even scheming. And on one level, it could be just quarrel, strong differences, and, and you, you, you just think through and you say, no, I'm going to get at it. You know, I'm going to have my side. And that threatens the unity. Uh, and that's why Paul says, you know, uh, work so that the same love, you being one in spirit, one in mind. So that's all that threatens that oneness of spirit and mind. 
But on, on, on another level, it could even go as far as uh, uh, litigation. Um, and it could have happened here in Philippi. We know it happened in Corinth. And I've experienced that in the life of a church, in my home church. Um, we had um, two good Christians, and one um, asked the other to work in his house to do some repairs, because that was his trade. He did the repair, and the one um, who hired him was not happy with the work. The one who did the work says, I've done the work well. And instead of trying to find as Christian a solution uh, together, they went to the court. And, and it, it was ugly, and um, people on the, in the church started with one, people in the church started with the other. At the end, they both left the church, and some people also left. It was really ugly, and it could be something of that. But there were quarrels, and instead of finding a way to work them through themselves, they went to the court. And of course, then, they said, well, you're supposed to be a, a body that loves each other, that works things out, but, you know, you, you need the outside court to, to solve your problems. Paul says, please, don't do that. Find ways to work things through. Keep the unity of the Spirit. Develop the mind of Christ. And so here Paul says, Philippians, you are called to set your own house in order, so that God's purpose for them as a witness uh, can be expressed fully. So what, what are the purpose and what maybe is God calling us to set in order? Maybe what is in our life stopping God from really expressing all his desires through us? Now last night I was really encouraged because I think one of the ways uh, that was expressed was exactly uh, the right way. Um, the group of St. James players came together to review the summer, to reflect and to discern. With a desire, God, we have those gifts, we have those abilities. How can we be a channel of your intentions? How can we be a channel of your purpose? How can we be part of this St. James church community and use all those gifts uh, for your glory? And, and first it started with a generous host, who provided food and drink, opened their house, um, even thoughtful to the point of buying a Belgian beer. Can you imagine that? People came, they gave their time, they shared their thoughts and ideas. And yes, at time it felt a little bit kind of, oh, it's going all over the place. You know, what is God saying? Which direction should we take? But at least for me, I, I feel at the end, it sense, there was a sense of, Direction that through the contributions, um, the, the, the thoughts freely shared, there was some emerging sense of direction that brought greater unity. There was a sense of, yes, I, th I think God is there. I think God is in this. And it brings a kind of a bigger vision, a bigger coming together, a greater sense of God's uh, purpose, a greater sense of uh, an ability to make a difference to our community and be a witness. And I think that's, that's what we need to work in all our groups, whether it's life groups, the home groups, whether the teams, we are the ministries. How do we get to that point where there is unity and a sense of, I think God is really directing us. And then through his strength, then to, um, to, to work that out with his grace. Paul says, the, the aim is that you would be blameless. You will be like children of God without fault in a rapt and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. Now again, this is about the life of the church. What does it mean for a church, a local church, to be a shining star in the community? Now, it sounds quite harsh, disconcerting, even offensive, you know, what, what is Paul saying? A, a rapt and crooked generation? I think the message is a bit more gentle. Um, but what is he saying? Well, it makes sense because Paul is so deeply um, rooted in Scripture. He knows them by heart. And he can, out of his mind, out of his head, think of a, a one sentence in the Old Testament, and it tells a whole story. And that's what he's doing here. This, this expression, uh, crooked Wrapped and crooked generation was actually applied to Israel itself. 
And Paul is quoting from uh, a book called Deuteronomy 32. And Moses is confessing he, he had enough of the Israelites. And he said, they have dealt corruptly with you, God. They are no longer your children uh, because of their blemish. They are a perverse and crooked generation. That's what Paul had in mind when he used that expression. A people who had forsaken God and who were now hostile to his ways. And so we could translate in this by, we are children of God, set in a God-forsaken, God-hostile world. A world that is not really interested in God, who does not want to hear about God, or when it's happy to hear something about God, he likes, they likes a God made to their own image. And to be true, that was me, before God revealed himself to me. There was a time when I was hostile to God. I didn't really want to hear about God. And then when the message of Jesus came, I was resisting and I was kind of making my own little philosophy or religion until God kind of broke through. The body of believers, our local church, are called to be light in a dark place. The experience that we have, we are called to share it with others so that they may come to know God. And you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of love. And again, it's another reference from the Old Testament, from Daniel. It says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. And the context was Israel in Babylon. It was a call to the Israelites to live such a life that they will be transforming uh, the place where they live. The passage speaks of being wise, Israelites skilled in knowing God's will, in living God's ways and God's intentions and God's purposes. And as they were doing that, they were shining among the Babylonian. And so Paul used the expression now for the Christian, this is exactly who you are. This is your new identity. You are called to be wise, to be skilled, in your knowledge of God's will, his way of living together as a church and personally in your life, skilled in discerning God's intention and purposes so that you will be shining in this world and bringing life. So that's what we are, light in a dark place. Paul says, we are light bearers, children of God, children of the light. And like the Christians at Philippi, we need to work out our communal salvation a communal spiritual health in order to be effective witness to our community and our town. Tom Wright writes, we are, to be the sign, we are to be a sign of God's new life in a world that only knows the way to death. So this morning we've learned, how do we do that? Well, we need to be obedient to let God love and direct us and to allow him to produce the desire, the will, the trusting in his power to produce the results. And we need humility, not thinking less of ourselves, but of ourself, uh, ourselves less. And then by keeping the light shining, by doing everything without grumbling or arguing. And so as we work out our common salvation with God's sustaining help and presence, we will be effective witnesses in our community, in our town, in our family, in our neighborhood. So may God bless us and may he bless you as you dedicate yourself, maybe afresh, to listening, following, trusting, and serving God, who is faithful, without injustice, right, and upright. Let us remind ourselves this morning that it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. So let it be so. Amen. Thank you, Fabian. I'd just like to um, ask Andy to come up now and lead us in a time of prayer.
Good morning. Our prayers this morning are for uh, young people, for our town, and for people we care for. The response to each section of the prayers will be, um, I will say, your kingdom come, and you say, your will be done. So we begin by giving thanks that Jesus showed us the way the truth and the life, that he forgives our weaknesses and sins. May we follow the path he set down to us for for us to follow, and may we shine brightly for him to those around us like stars in the sky. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We give thanks for our children, young people, and teenagers, and for what they teach us older ones. God our Father, be near to them. They grow up in a dangerous and confusing world. Guard them from forces and bad things which are so prevalent in our society. Lead them in the path of goodness and truth, we pray. Enable us as parents, friends or grandparents to give them at all times the security of our love, example and prayers. We pray for the ministry here at St James's that it will blossom and thrive with quality input from talented people. Lord, would you show us the way to achieve that? So for our children, young people and teenagers, your kingdom come, your will be done. The next slide is a copy of an article from the County Gazette. I I don't expect you to read it, but it reports that in 2023, Taunton's crime rate is in the top 20 of all 414 towns, villages, and cities in Somerset. It's 83% higher than the average for the South West. And the most common crimes are violence and sexual offences, but there are many others. So we pray this morning, Lord, we ask for your help for everyone who's been affected by this, for justice for the victims, and a way back to peace and healing for them. We pray too for transformation of all those with a desire to do evil in our town and for a breakthrough into the closed minds involved. Come in your power, Lord, and help this town of ours. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We pray for ourselves using these words of St. Paul on the screen. So please join together. May the grace of God of hope fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in him so that we may overflow with hope by the power of your Holy Spirit. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And we pray for the people that we care for now, by using a prayer from the Northumbria community from the quiet day here recently. We pray, um, as we pray, have in your mind's eye who you would want the Lord to touch this morning. Those who are struggling in our congregation, including Andrew and Ellen, you may want to pray for people passing by in the street outside this morning, whoever they are, Let's join together and say, May the peace of God go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing and be welcomed through our doors. Your will be done. And finally we say, Lord of the Church, hear our prayer 
and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Thank you, Mandy. We're going to continue in a, a mindset of prayerfulness now as we begin to move into our communion part of the, of the service. We're going to begin with a confession. Um, and as we move into this, it's, we're going to pause, pause for a moment of quiet just to, to bring to mind some of the, um, the things that, that we're not proud of, the things that we really don't want to acknowledge to ourselves even, maybe. Um, but just know that we are in the presence of a loving God who knows it already, who loves us. Not, we're not coming before a, a cruel judge, but we're coming before a loving Father who just wants us to be us before him and be honest about who we are. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. God, our Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May the Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. May the Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. We're now going to uh, share the peace with one another. Um, If you're at all new to church, um, then this might seem a bit weird. But we basically, this this is, the the idea of the peace is that before we come to uh, share the bread and wine, before we come before the the, uh, communion table, it's just a, a way of us making peace with one another. Some of the um, things Fabian touched on um, reminded me of, of that, that the, the, the purpose of this is just to say, I'm at peace with you when we greet one another. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to stand for, for this bit, if you can. Peace to you from God, who is our Father. Peace from Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, who gives us life. The peace of the triune God be always with you and also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of the peace. Just before the start of the service, um, someone came to me um, with um, a verse he had received from the Lord, and it's the um, famous um, verse from Matthew 3, um, 17, when Jesus is baptized, and then a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And that's what communion is all about. It's about us responding to a Jesus whom we believe is the Son of God who died for us, for our sins, conquered death. And we are those who want to listen to him and follow him. So may I invite you to stand if you can. If you're a bit too tired, no problem. Remain seated. Um, And then when we come to the Lord's Prayer, then we will take a seat. The Lord is here. God, our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong, we give you thanks and praise. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus, our Savior, Mary's child. He suffered under us. He died to save us from our sins. And he rose in glory from the dead. 
Father. On the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it. Sorry, the bread. That's the cup. There we go. (laughs) This is the bread. He took the bread. He thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And after the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. So together we say, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we bring this bread and wine. And remember his death and resurrection. Send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and blood. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honor and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so in faith and trust we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, or give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So communion is uh, given on those uh, two tables. There will be someone uh, leading you uh, to them. Um, But if you prefer um, just a blessing, you can just come and then we will also pray with you. If it's too difficult to come to those tables, we will come to you uh, to provide communion. At the back, there will be prayer ministry also at the time, during the time of communion. So all are welcome to share in this meal. Uh, for those of you who have that faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If I can ask those who are going to help me to come forward first. Thank you.
Jesus, with gratitude for your sacrifice. We offer our bodies, our will, and our lives afresh to you. Use us this week to be a witness, whether it's through acts of kindness, through help, through our prayers, or through sharing something of your love. Fill us with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Or notices, yeah, there you go, a few notices. Um, if we go to the first one, um, I think I have a few things here. So last Sunday, to put your name, if you are those who are on the Sunday of harvest, very hungry, but you can't host. So the idea is that we have a number of hosts who uh, will prepare some amazing food, and uh, they would like to welcome you in their homes. So if you haven't signed up to that, uh, and if you're not very sure, there is still a leaflet to explain what it is, but today is the last day to put your name, so that tomorrow we can then look at all the names and then um, put some of those names with, with hosts. It's great. And then on the other side, there is a list uh, for the early service of what to bring for the harvest service. So. It's on that, or it's at the back. There is also a green sheet there with that list. So pick that one up so that you know what to bring on uh, Sunday, the 15th of October. And then tonight is the room, which is a kind of more informal type of service with um, lots of times to sing worship songs, to reflect on a certain theme, and to be in God's presence. So that's at 7 o'clock in the main hall. And then we have uh, Thursday fellowship uh, this Thursday, just to remind yourself. Um, Vicky, I think you, you sent me. What, what's happening on Thursday? Okay, how to sell your property or buy a property. That's very interesting. Thank you very much. So that's this Thursday. Um, and then, um, just to let you know, um, the baptism and the confirmation service. So we have four people, uh, yeah, four people who wants to be baptized. But if you know, if you heard about it, and God kind of said, "I want to explore," you still time enough time to come to me and have a conversation. And then we have two people who will be confirmed: Ellie uh, Shorthouse, who is a teenager among us, um, but also um, Rita. Uh, who will be with us so um, and again if you want to come but you don't have transportation because it's uh, in Wells in Wells Cathedral come to me and uh, we, we can arrange some transports and finally um, just to let you know Tier Fun Quiz Night which is coming up on the 21st of October there will be ticket on sale as from next week it's going to be at seven o'clock and form groups of uh, four to six um, and if you can't but you want to help, uh, then um, help is also. And Sue, talk to the lady who's standing there at the back. But more next week and tickets on sale. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to stand for our final song?
you are hope. Transform us anew. Lord, you are freedom. Transform us anew. Lord, you are love. Transform us anew. Keep us close to you as you transform the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you're, if you're leaving now, then please uh, go in peace and have a, have a great rest of the day. But there's tea and coffee in the corner if, you, uh, if you'd like to stick around for a little bit. God bless. <laughs>